The following is a presentation of TNT Sports. They have earned star status in the NBA. Yet for each, the goal of a championship has been elusive. Utah's John Stockton and Carl Malone have never missed the playoffs. Will this quest take them to their first NBA final? The Jazz took another step last night, pushing their postseason winning streak to five. The mailman delivered to Dikembe's doorstep and route to a 32-point night. Now the series shifts to the Rockies, where the Nuggets will try to bounce right back, as they did in that round one upset of Seattle, with a vengeance. A change of venue in the East has the Hawks and Pacers heading to Indiana tied at one. With Reggie Miller hitting just two of 13, the Pacers posted a playoff low 69 points. Mookie Blaylock's triple-double sparked a 23-point Atlanta win, but he had plenty of help. And it comes Danny Manning. Whoa, look at that shot. 16 points for Manning and a chance for a three-point play. Tonight on TNT, first stop, legendary Chicago Stadium, where Phil Jackson hopes his Bulls' fourth quarter woes were left at the Garden. In game one, a nine-point lead vanished in the final 12 minutes. In game two, another fourth quarter in the teams allowed the Knicks to grab a 2-0 lead. Our doubleheader continues in America West. The Rockets have wasted the home court, losing twice. A record-setting Suns comeback in Game 2 means Houston must win at least two games in Phoenix. They hang their hopes on a key. So the heat's on the Bulls and Rockets who are staring at 3-0 deficits if they don't win tonight. Good evening, everybody. Ernie Johnson in Atlanta will bring you the Knicks and Bulls followed by the Rockets and Suns. The big news in the NBA today, Del Harris, the new coach of the Lakers. And we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about the past or whatever because that's, that's not productive. And yet uh, uh, to know that there is a, a, a tremendous heritage here and it's something that... Uh, you know, I want to reestablish and be a part of reestablishing. And off the road into the studio, Dick Versace joins us. Your thoughts on Del Harris, the new Laker guy? Well, Ernie, I'm always delighted when a silver-haired veteran gets an opportunity to coach an <laughs> NBA team. <laughs> but is it a surprise at all? How will he do out there? I, I think Del Harris is a veteran coach. He's going to do fine. He knows certainly knows what to do. Uh, he he obviously has been preparing himself to get back in coaching. You know, he took the uh, job with Sacramento where he was the, uh, you know, the counsel to their, to their club. I, I think that uh, he's a teacher. I thought Randy Fun did a good job, and then he got caught up in this magic change. And so maybe he'll get a chance to coach again someday. I thought he was a fine young coach. Dell knows what he's doing, and, and he's comfortable with Jerry and Jerry with Dell. And that, that's a big start. Quickly on the Bulls and Knicks here, game three. Is this a different year? Is, is New York going to take the champs this time around? Uh, I, I feel this way. The last thing that any group of players, a group of coaches, or a group of fans wants to ever admit is that the other team is better. The New York Knicks are a better basketball team than the Chicago Bulls. And remember this, Michael Jordan isn't there, and the Bulls are trying to win with the Minnesota Timberwolves center. Utah's trying to do the same thing, and they're 5-1 and one in the playoffs. <laughs> of course, the Bulls will take, have a new home in Chicago next season, and at halftime tonight, Paul Ryden is going to take one last fond look at Chicago Stadium. The Bulls aren't quite ready to move out just yet. They'll try to tighten things up in that series with New York. Game one of our doubleheader. It's next on TNT. The Chicago Bulls return to the friendly frenzy on Madison. The 338th consecutive sellout. Over 18,000 have come to see if Friday the 13th is lucky for the Bulls. They'll need a little bit of it tonight. They trail the Knicks in the best of seven series. Two games to none. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ron Thula. Now, when Anthony Mason showed up to training camp in October, he was 25 pounds overweight. Really didn't get into shape till sometime after the All-Star break. In the final week of the regular season, Anthony Mason was suspended. Missed three games. 
but he has come back with a vengeance. In fact, Pat Riley said if it wasn't for Mason, they would not have won game two. Our broadcast partner is Hubie Brown. Hubie, Anthony Mason has played extremely well, but so has the rest of the Knicks bench. Yeah, you look at Anthony Mason, a major force. We're talking about 29 minutes a game. He's averaging 13 points, 10 rebounds, leading the Knicks, averaging four offensive rebounds, and then leading them in assists at 3.5 a game. Now the bench is doing it. They're outscoring the Chicago bench that was so dominant all year by 20 points. You can see it in the field goal percentage, and the minutes are almost the wash. Well, both games pretty much the same scenario. The Chicago Bulls lead for three quarters, only to lose it in the fourth. Yeah, but you look at that fourth quarter, Ron. We want to say that there is a 10-point difference, 27 to 17 in points, and Chicago only shooting 28%. Another major reason is Chicago has seven 24-second violations in two games. Also, Scottie Pippen's struggling, and you can see the scoring 55-34. to oh, you mean Pat Riley's talked to his team about being overconfident because they lead 2-0. Now, Phil Jackson, on the other hand, he's talked to his team about adjustments. What will they be? Well, the adjustments, Ryan, you can't get bent out of shape. You've lost two games by a total of nine points. The key here, Scottie Pippen must play more than 34 minutes. His time has been curtailed. Why? He's had 11 fouls in two games. Plus, he's struggling shooting 35% and also four turnovers. Horace Grant, one of the premier offensive rebounders in this league, third behind Rodman and Shaquille O'Neal. He usually gets four and a half a game. Oakley doing a terrific job. Grant with only one. Grant and Pippen must step up. Well, the New York Knicks have lost five straight game threes in the playoffs. In fact, in playoff series between the Bulls and the Knicks, they have never won a game three. But It is incredibly loud at Chicago Stadium, especially when Scottie Pippen was introduced. As we look at tonight's Chrysler Plymouth starting matchups, the Knicks same lineup since March 1st. Well, with Bonner and then his substitute Mason on Pippen, this has been a major factor. Oakley doing a terrific job on Grant, keeping him off the offensive glass. And the coaches for the respective teams, Pat Riley looking to become only the second to win an NBA title with two different teams. And his counterpart, a former New York Nick himself, is 73% playoff winning percentage, tops among active coaches, Phil Jackson, the last three NBA titles. And our officials tonight, Dick Bavetta, Paul Mahalik, and Steve Javi. You know, Ron, you made a good point. Riley's trying to do it with two teams. There's only been one coach who has accomplished that. Alex Hannum did it in 1958 with the St. Louis Hawks and then with the Philadelphia 76ers in 67. The Bulls have been talking about style the last 24 hours and the style they're going to play. Speaking of style, how about the commissioner, David Stern, in attendance tonight, sitting next to Georgetown head basketball coach John Thompson, watching his former player, Patrick Ewing. But the Bulls said, we've got to play our style. We can't be a mud wrestling team, is what Phil Jackson said. Can they play that style against the Knicks? We have 48 minutes to find out. Well, the main thing is, is they must just step up and execute in that last quarter. Chicago Bulls don't lose very often at home in the playoffs. Armstrong coming off an excellent game in game two, continues the trend here tonight. Well, you like to see that. B.J. had a terrific game in game two, over 20 points, and he was looking for the shot. Ewing brings Cartwright way outside. Oakley keeps it alive. Number four in offensive rebounding in the NBA during the regular season. Bonner. The Bulls once again as they have in the first two games looking active in the first quarter. Myers. Grant. Cartwright misses. 
Hubert Davis, no place to go. Bonner with the save into the stand. Oh, my. Great hustle by, by Myers first, and then by the Knicks to save that. And Hubert Davis gets his first two. Chicago out here early, looking to up-tempo, get the ball in quick and up the sides. Myers draws the whistle. That's in their arsenal, Ron. Anytime Myers backs down Hubert Davis, he has the advantage, not only in size, he can get up over the top of him. Plus, you can run him in and post him, which Chicago has been known to do. Chicago has missed only seven free throws, make it eight in this series so far versus the Knicks. That's a major fact because they were 24th in the league during the season, only shooting 70%. Ewing inside, shot will go. Whistle before the shot, it'll be on Bill Cartwright. Anytime that you put your hands in the lower back of a post-up player, the referees are very consistent at playoff time. They are making that call. You're better off putting your forearm right across your back because you are much stronger and you can hold them in place. Now in the first quarter of game two, Derek Harper had two uncontested layups. The Bulls are very aware of that. Shot clock, 13, not a factor yet. Davis draws the whistle. Myers doesn't like it. Do you like the fact that Hubert Davis, as well as B.J. Armstrong at the other end of the floor, are going to the basket strong? They have been known as people who do not take you off the dribble. Both people have elevated their game and are having a nice playoff. A lot of body contact. Offensive foul is going to be on Anthony Bonner for a block, says Dick Pavetta. Well, they set up a staggered screen on the baseline, Ron, to the left of the rim. Anthony Bonner stepped out to pick off the defender and definitely, you know, caused that action. A little pressure put on by the Knicks. Well, this is something that the Knicks can do because Harper and then Anthony, as well as Starks, are excellent defenders off the dribble. Cartwright inside. Pippen tries to come in the back way. Shot clock at six. Shot clock at two. Pippen's going to have to launch one from 25, and he buries it! 18,000 are saying it's a sign. <laughs> well, he's four of ten now from the arc in this two-game set with an X. Inside, Bonner. Bonner has had two easy opportunities, Ron, and he's left them short. Myers from three. That hits nothing but air, but Grant is there to clean it up. That's the man. That's the man who can change this series. They need him crashing the offensive glass because he's a real warrior. And when you take him away from the basket as a decoy, you're just hurting the team. 7-0 run by the Bulls. But the Knicks will not panic. Davis inside, you called it even. He's more aggressive tonight, taking it to the hole. Well, you like to see that. And, and one thing you saw right there, Scotty Pippen allowed him to lay that up without even challenging. I know that Scotty is conscious. He fell out of the one game and had five in game from game one. Crowd of wanting a foul as B.G. Armstrong went through a pick. He slices around the backside. Shot clock at four. Grant. For some reason, it's much easier to shoot A at home and B in front of a full crowd that are cheering their lungs out right now. And I tell you, those are the closest shots they've gotten in the first three games. <laughs> Inside, Bonner this time makes good. Hey, Bonner, Bonner is quick, and you just cannot leave him. Now, in their game plan, Scottie Pippen, as well as Coop Coach, leave Bonner and Mason to double team, and then they get active if you hit Bonner, he has a terrific opportunity to score inside of 10 feet. Patrick Ewing trying to front the post set by Cartwright. The triangle slips over to the left. Shot clock at three. Armstrong loses the handle. Bonner's going to be fouled by Horace Grant. Anytime that you penetrate the lane against the Knicks, you know that there will be three blue shirts cutting off your path. And then they all go for the steal. Now it is Harper running the show. Ewing on Cartwright. 
Cartwright puts a body on him, a couple of fakes. Patrick loses the handle. Pippen will come up with it. It's a three on three. Now here's the trailer right behind them. Davis has to foul him. No, it's on the dribble. No basket anyway. Hubert Davis kept Scotty Pippen from the easy two, but he does pick up his second. Now while you're watching the game, Anytime the ball goes into Ewing on the post, Scottie Pippen leads his man in double teams. In this series, Bonner and Mason are wearing out Chicago by getting on the offensive boards. Mason is averaging four, and Bonner one. So that's five, not from your big people, but from your small forward. Well, Charles Smith comes in. That foul check, that is on Bonner, his second. But Smith comes into the lineup. The sixth-year pro out of Pittsburgh. The six weeks of the season, he has chronic sore knees. Well, he'll give Scotty Pippen a different look. He's 6'10 with long arms. Ewing pushes Cartwright in the back. The one push, Dick Levin a season. Well, if you're going to call it at the one end, then you must call it at this end. Now, I know Patrick's all upset. He did not like the call. But if Cartwright will just get in there, post up, and then sit down. And by that I mean spread himself out, make himself big, do not allow Ewing to front him. Cartwright could be a factor if they'll just get the ball into him. What's the hole, Will? See, there's Ewing fronting Cartwright. You have to have more patience. Smith on Pippen. Smith, Bonner, and Mason have worn Pippen out in the first two ball games. Working around to Myers, a little bit out of his range. He's an air ball the second time tonight. Uh, good Smith call. is down. He's been way short on two perimeter shots. Harper tries to take it to the hole. Whistle. We have a foul call, but we also have a timeout. Armstrong whistle for the foul. And we've got a little action going on as the timeout is called with the Bulls leading by five. And now Grant wants to get in on it. Oakley's pulled away by Dick Bavetta. Well, the refs are right on top of this. This all started at the other end of the floor while the teams were moving on that fast break. There was a collision, and a couple of guys hit the floor. It just carried over. Playoff time. A low price and two-game lead into Denver. It's gun check time in Mile High Country. Yeah, Sunday at 9 on TNT. I'd like to show you where this all started. It happened at the other end of the floor. Keep an eye on Charles Smith, 54. Now watch, Pippen hits him in the chest. Smith just pushes him off. Now Grant and Pippen get in his face. Now there will be a shot attempt at the basket. Now keep an eye right at the bull. Now right there, Smith pushes Pippen down. Now Pippen trips him right there. So as he goes down and hits the floor, this now carries over once Harper goes in and takes a shot attempt. The referees call a double technical right now on Charles Smith and also on Pippen. Pippen's second game in a row. He's picked up a technical foul. Cancel each other out. We'll go down the other end, and Derek Harper will be shooting the foul shot after the foul by B.J. Armstrong. Now, remember, on the stand-up, we brought this point out. Scotty Pippen has been limited. He's only averaging 34 minutes in these two games. Now, we're talking about a guy who plays right at 40 minutes at playoff time. They need him in the ball game, but it has been fouled. He fouled out of game two, and he had five in game one. And I think it would be fair to say you'd be that the fouls in game two, some of them were on the silly category. Well, well, right there, that that's another extension, Ron, because what you're doing is causing it by popping Smith when you really didn't have to pop him. The Knicks shooting 80% from the line in this series. Both teams extremely well from the strike. Harper gets them both. Harper, the 11th year pro out of Illinois, pulled the Knicks within three with 6.55 left in the first. Knicks apply that pressure and push you out a little further. There's the lob over the post, and Cartwright gets the basket and the whistle. See, that's been there 
last year during the playoffs, during the four games during the season when the Knicks won three out of four and in the two games. Now just watch. They front. If you clear the opposite side, Cartwright can make that catch every single time, and then he will be able to take it to the basket. By Grant clearing out that side and allowing that to open up so that you get area with the lob. We have a lane violation. It'll be on the next. It'll be on Charles Smith, I believe. We'll shoot it again. As Billy Cartwright, who was originally drafted by the Knicks back in 79, the third pick overall, was traded for Charles Oakley back in June of 88. Well, Billy was the leading uh, rebounder in the country at the University of San Francisco, also about a 25-point score. Came into the pros his first few years, averaged over 20 points for Red Holzman, and then always stayed above 18 points before he had the four operations for the stress fracture in his foot. He's had back problems this year. Davis now Oakley battling Pippen for position. Once again, that's taking a lot of energy out of Scottie Pippen to put up with Charles Oakley leaning on him like he is. Shot clock at four. Bad pass. Davis just back has court. to throw it up. It was a backcourt violation and a 24-second violation. Yeah, he definitely stepped over the line. But that's okay. They get the 24-second call, and that's what you like to see. Now, remember, we have two of the top three defensive teams in the league here. In holding teams under 100, the Knicks did it 62 times. Chicago did it 60. The only other team that you would consider a, a top defensive team above these two would be Seattle because they had a nine-point differential, and then it dropped to the Knicks at seven. New York forcing Chicago to begin their offense way out front. All that does is, A, it takes time off the clock and eliminates crisp passing. Myers slashing inside, an offensive foul is going to be called on Pete Myers wow. in a second. Wow. And they are not going to let anything no. win today. Ron, I'm telling you, Phil Jackson's got a point. Any time that you have your shoulder ahead, you're going to see he drops his shoulder. His shoulder is in there. See, that, you can't call that. That's moving, and he had him on his shoulder to begin with. Inside the driving layup. And we have some more pushing and shoving as Dick Bavetta stops it to keep Davis and Myers from drawing with each other. Let's see what they're going to call. Double foul. See, they are not going to allow these guys to get bent out of shape. Right now, Steve Kerr is coming in replacing Myers. Now, that was a bad call at the other end of the floor, Ron. And he should have been on the foul line shooting, too. But he complicated the situation by bumping at the other end with Hubert Davis. Now, Pat Riley smartly takes out Hubert Davis and brings in John Starks. Well, John Starks, you're replacing a little bit of emotion with a volcano. <laughs> Maybe a great coaching there. There it is. There it is again. Cartwright is going to be hammered. And the Bulls make or pay, have to pay for taking it inside. Now we're back to show you this now. Anytime that there is a running in the post. Now hold it right here. You see Patrick Ewing. If you empty out the back side, right on the opposite side, you can throw right over the top. Now they are two for two in this right now. Now in games one and two, they did not clear out the back side. So you can see right now, Cartwright will have a field day if Ewing intends on fronting him. Billy Cartwright averaged 21 points his rookie year in the NBA. Played only nine minutes in the first three games of this series. Well, in 83 and 84 round, when the Knicks, uh, I was with the Knicks my first two seasons, not only did he score for you, but he shot at 56% from the floor, 78 from the line. And I think the key to Bill Carton, he's accepted this role that he's not a scorer with Chicago. He is quite the gentleman and the ultimate professional. Smith, no, they're going to call it. Right now, Charles Smith cannot get anything to go his way. John Starks is pleading his case to Vic Lavetta. But what you had there was a pump fake, and then he jumped right into the chest of the defender. That's the 15th foul on the Knicks already this quarter. Now we've got a whistle. They want an illegal defense. And that's the first, and they got it. 
That's exactly part of Chicago's strategy coming into this series is draw Pat Riley and Dick Carter's troops into an illegal. Now we have played less than seven minutes and we've had more room marks oh. than we had in games one and two. Everyone is feisty. The fans are nervous because they have been attacking this bull team as well as the newspaper people unjustly oh. attacking players. And it's, uh, when you think about it, they lost two games by a total of nine points. 15 fouls have already been called. Kerr gets away with a bad pass, and Grant capitalizes on it. But you touched on a good point, Huey. The pressure has been unmerciful on Tony Kukoc and Scotty Pippen. Very unfair on Tony Kukoc, saying that he's a phony, as one writer wrote it today. There's a nice screen for Starks. Don't leave Oakley open. He will take that shot. Well, anytime Starks comes off and you can hit him, he can make something happen on the other side of the floor because you can count on the defenses coming into the lane to help out. Her, the back door is there, but he doesn't grab it. Starks lost the ball and it belonged to the Bulls. Now, that was a difficult pass by Horace Grant. See, by them getting it into the pivot people now, the guy coming out of that corner can backdoor at will. 429 left in the first. The Bulls lead it by five, and it has been everything we thought this would be. Glad to be with us on this Friday the 13th. Ernie Johnson in our studios with Dick Versace. Big thing for the pivot people tonight for the Bulls. If they do get the catches, it will be the first time in three games. When that cutter comes out of the corner, you've got to give them a good pass. You cannot be trying to thread the needle, mainly because you have at least three options that will come after that. They only put 18 on the shot clock. Grant lets it go. Horace Grant is the hot hand tonight. He's getting the outside shots. He's four of five. Well, he's been smoking from an offensive standpoint. He's averaging 18 points in the series. The big thing is tonight, he's on the offensive glass. He's moved in. Ewing gets the shooter's roll, his first points of the ball game. He was 9 of 12 in game two. Grant Ewing giving him a lot of room as Oakley now switches over to Cartwright. Grant's going to take it. With 3.48 left in the first, the Bulls lead it by five. Mason to the hole. Oh, he had the shot, couldn't put it down. Got to look now. Pippen from the arc. He feels it. Now, he has really been struggling in his threes. He was three for nine coming in, but now two for two, so he's five for 11 in this series of three. Biggest lead, timeout. This program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the National Basketball Association. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. Now we'd like to show you the triangle. A triangle is to the left side of the floor. The basketball is here. When this pass goes into the post, you are going to see the backdoor man come from the corner. Now the passer will come in and scream, and you will see this man come up so that they have a continuity there right now. Now just watch, that has been missing in games one and two. There was your back door, he was open, and then they also could have come off that down screen. Neither team has given up 100 points in the playoffs. Tony Kukoc checks in for the Bulls. New York's four of their six games. Their opponent has failed to shoot over 40%, but right now the Bulls shooting 60%. Grant on Mason. Hooks the right arm around. Good coach. Harper on him. Needs to take advantage of the height. Plenty of time. Scotty Pippen. Doesn't get it. Grant battles Starks, comes up with the loose ball. Already he has three offensive rebounds. In games one and two, he had a total of two. Cartwright had a good look at a dunk. Starks got his hand inside. Now the Bulls are getting every single bounce. They're also making the perimeter shots. The fans love it because they just had a foul call on Starks. But what I like about this is, is that Cartwright is active and they are finding him. 
17 fouls already called tonight. Now take a look at the free throws. During the season, they averaged 23. They're averaging 29 in the series from 71 to 88. So you can see, uncharacteristically for them, they're doing an excellent job at the line. Nice pass. Beautiful lead pass. Oakley has to hold it up, wait for Mason, and starts to come on down. Pippen staying all over Derek Harper. One thing Chicago's defense is doing they didn't do in the first two is they're picking the Knicks up a lot earlier. Shot clock at five. Mason on Kukoc. Kukoc with the rejection. Yes, he did. And only one on the shot clock. First of all, he knocked it out of Mason's hand. That was the first move. And then he blocked the shot attempt. One second. Well, that should be it. That should be it. Of course. They're going to put one on. I think oh. Dick Bavetta is going to go over and talk to Steve Jabby. Yeah, but there was one on the clock. The ball came in. The defender deflected it, so that should have been one second. Well, let's see. I think Dick's saying going to give him. Well, it's actually, when it's one on, it's actually less than one, if that makes any sense. It could be like a wow, point that's nine. a break. Yeah, well, that's a break for the Knicks. Right now, you must smother the inbounds pass. Harper pulling the trigger, doesn't hit anything. That's a violation. The second one for New York this evening. From an intensity standpoint, you can see a frustrated coach there, Pat Riley. This is the most energy that the Bulls oh, yeah. have put out defensively in the half-court sets that the Knicks are trying to run. And the Bulls are on a 10-4 run. See, they're making that pass into the post that will. There's that down screen. Harper meets Kerr out front. Now Ewing pushing Cartwright. Cartwright nice. gets a step on him and has the easy move. You cannot continue to front if they empty out that backside. Because once Cartwright makes the catch, there is no defender to help him. Harper from the outside. Anthony Mason, the big time slam. Whoa. Charles Oakley. Oakley. My goodness. You want the Oak man to come over here and lay no, on? No, sir. What? No, sir. I got everybody in East Cleveland mad at me already at Oakley's wash house. Mason leaning on two coach. Punt right. And he has the hot hand tonight. Not only that, but that was a great pass and court awareness by Tony Kuko. He just made a beautiful pass all the way across the lane. 10 for Big Bill tonight. The lead is 12. Starts from the top of the key. Knicks can't buy a basket. The key is, can they overcome this frustration? There's still a lot of basketball left. The main thing is forward. to keep pushing the ball around and to try to take advantage of the mismatches like right here. See, that force, by posting up start, that force starts the foul there. I'd like to show you Billy Cartwright. Ewing gets caught trying to front, and Billy just takes it strong. You saw what happened there. Oakley did not want to foul. Now, there's that beautiful bounce pass by Kukoc. Cartwright posting up on the side, spotting up, and a nice pass. Scotty Pippen already with seven points. How about Pippen, Armstrong, and Grant, 28 free throws in game two, and they didn't miss one. Scott Williams will come in, and they're going to give Horace Grant a breather, and he'll get a nice round of applause. Well, Scott Williams has only played 10 minutes a game. Now, he's a major factor here because he's a horse. This guy can take a physical punishment, and he can score with his back to the basket. He has been wondering why he hasn't played more, but Phil Jackson said before the game that he was going to see action tonight because he doesn't want his players afraid to get hit when they take it to the basket. See, they have Pippen all over the point guard because he's the double team man. Three-time all-defensive first team, Scotty Pippen. Anthony for three, Greg Anthony. Well, he's been doing it, Ron. You hate, you know, he, he's now two for five in, in the three-point shooting. But at the end of the year, in the last two months, he really started to come on shooting a high percentage. In the last three years, the Bulls have only gone to the limit in a playoff series once. That was against the Knicks in 92. Shot clock at four. Pippen can't get it. The tip won't go. Now Cartwright kept that alive twice. 
He and Ewing are really after one another. Starks wastes no time, and he drops the rainbow through. Oh, I love it. John Starks in this series is now four for 14 in threes. The shot at the buzzer by Anthony won't go, but Bill Cartwright, 36 years old, the 15th year pro, 10 points tonight, two more than he had total in game one and two, the Bulls by eight at the end of one. The New York Knicks, who haven't won an NBA title since the 72-73 season, they lead this best-of-seven series with Chicago two games to none, but they trail after one in game three by eight. You can see the field goal percentage is high for both of these teams. They came in with the Knicks shooting 48, and then the Bulls only 40. Now Starks knocks down this three. The Knicks are now two for three in threes. Chicago also two for three. But the big discrepancy, Chicago with 12 rebounds, six offensive for a total of nine points. That's the difference. Big difference. Ewing, Starks, Anthony Mason, and Oakley for the Knicks. Luke Longley has checked in for the Chicago Bulls. He's joined by Kuko, Charmstrong, Williams, and Kerr. See, it's senseless for Longley to try to grab the ball. The main thing, all he has to do is stay in front of Patrick because Patrick cannot stop on a dime once he starts to dribble a basketball. Right now, if you're in New York, Ron, you're only down eight. Everything went the way of the Bulls in that quarter. They get every loose ball, they make the threes in transition, and you're only down eight. Patrick Ewing only one of three, two points, two rebounds in the first 12 minutes of the ball game. Averaging 22 points in the playoffs during this series. We have another lane violation. It's going to be called, I believe, on the Knicks. Oh, and they wave it off. Wave it off. Well, they've been consistent. So the guys tonight are going to really have to shape up. Now, we know during the course of the season, we see guys in the lane all night long. But if that's the way it's going to be called, you must adjust. Kuko is getting a lot of playing time tonight, and he's been very good at it. Now, uh, Williams took his eye off of that pass. And then Anthony goes right around him. Six New York turnovers, four for the Bulls. Mason working on Kuko, steps back to Trigger's pole. People are on Kuko, the media guys are also. In three less minutes than during the season, he's averaging the same amount of points, 10, the same amount of rebounds, and the same amount of assists. And he's a double teamer. His man is the free man when he double teams. Starks takes advantage of Steve Kerr guarding him. Whistle the foul. That will be on Kerr. Let's take a look at Anthony Mason's last shot as Mason jars Kukos. Well, you're going to see Anthony. He's playing with a lot of confidence. We told you in this series, in 29 minutes, 13 points. And here's the 10 rebounds. He's first on the team in assists. That's astonishing. The field goal percentage is there. And then he is also the leading Nick with four per game on the offensive boards. But your man, Pippen or Kukoc, leaves you to double team Patrick Ewing. You should be on the offensive boards. John Starks now with four as JoJo English comes in. Steve Kerr sits down. English, the second-year pro out of South Carolina, was a free agent in 92. Played six games with the Bulls back then. Came over in November from Minnesota. Now, the big discrepancy in the series is the point production of the bench. 41 to 21. That is per game. And right now, we have the majority of bench people out there. So the Bulls must execute. The Knicks are within three. Kukoc, the big dump off to Williams. That is what Tony Kukoc does best. He has beaten his man tonight off the dribble every time and delivered a perfect pass. Smith, Williams bellying up. The fake, the arm. Longley with the rebound. Get it out. Got to get it out now. See, you can't hold the ball in this series because the Knicks will get back. You get it out, you can possibly get some transition. And the Bulls need to score off missed shots and turnovers. There you go. When two good
good defensive teams play one another. The team usually wins who gets the most easy shots. Williams with three on the shot clock. With one. Barely gets it off and it counts. I told you, he has a great game when it's back to the basket. Everyone makes a big issue out of Horace Grant being an unrestricted free agent, but he also is an unrestricted free agent. And if he wouldn't have hurt his knee early in the season, he may not be in a Bulls uniform tonight. Mason on English. Longley puts up a hand just enough to distract it. Smith kicks it back out. Anthony from the arm. Ewing can't come up with it. Longley does. Here comes Kukoc. Longley runs the floor. Oh, yes. How about Kukoc? His court awareness to look for the trail. Pat Riley upset. Wants a 22nd right now. The fans are loving it. Tony Kukos off the dribble. Once he gets into the lane, watch how the Knicks from the weak side. There's your first help. There's your second. But he's such a good passer, he finds the drop off. Now here, keep an eye on Williams. Watch this fake. Head fake up and then under. Just beautiful. He's well schooled with his back to the basket. Now there's Kukos looking for the trailer. And then Luke Longley taking it strong to the rim. Tony Kukos much maligned. And like I tried to tell you, during the course of the season, 24 minutes, 10 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. He's doing it in less time. The same points, same rebounds, and same assists. From the outside, Charles Smith drains his first field goal as Herb Williams comes in, giving Patrick Ewing a rest. Now the Bulls had 21 shots in quarter number one. If they continue that pace, they'll be over 80. They've been averaging 72 shots versus the Knicks and only 80 points. Right there, you had the perfect thing. They emptied out the weak side. They fronted the post over the top. That should have been a basket for Williams. Got a foul underneath. It'll be on Kukoc. You're going to see Kukoc. See, Mason can manhandle Kukoc. There's a tremendous difference in weight there and in upper body strength. Anytime that Mason gets down in there, Kukoc is trying to front him, and Mason will not allow it to happen. All five players in for the Knicks are from the bench, but they really have four of those five that are actually starters on this team or have been starters. Their leader, Starks, takes a big hit. Now that was a Luke Wally stepped into it. That was a charge. John Starks is open on every down screen on either side of the lane. They are following him around the screen. By following him, you are giving him the lane. He has been open time after time. Now that, that play, he did not have a good shot attempt. He went right into the chest of the defender. Starts two for two tonight. In the series, 13 for 13 versus Chicago. Now that's coming to the line and making a pressure foul shot. The big thing about Starks in this series, in games one and two, he attempted 13 threes in two games. <laughs> that's six point six and a half threes a game. His feeling is if I miss 12 of those 13, I may hit the next five. Well, so we have some teams that do not do that. Close <laughs> to the season for a night. His first miss of the series versus Chicago is Bill Weddington, who's played only four minutes in this series. Another player, Phil Jackson, wanted to get in so he could get, be a little more physical to check in with him. Well, at the conclusion of tonight's game, UB and I will be selecting the Budweiser player of the game, and Budweiser will donate $1,000 in his behalf to the United Negro College Fund. Coach, big game though. Dude. Yeah, he has four assists, two rebounds, and a block. This is a good battle though because Mason moves his feet well. Mason doesn't buy the oh. fakes. He comes up with the left hand, almost pulled the rabbit out. He's underneath, and he is going to be oh. hammered hard by Anthony. That was a hard shot over the back. I mean, he really got blocked. Anthony came in there and did not allow that layup. Now you're going to see this is a, a terrific move. Now watch how Mason has him covered perfectly. Now just watch how he steps under. Fake up, under. Now here comes Winning. 
Hamilton. A lucky steal. And then he finds Kuka. The coach missed the first free throw. 74% during the regular season for Tony Kukoc from the line. In this series, he is now four of seven. And one to that. The three-time European Player of the Year has given the Bulls a seven-point advantage inside of eight minutes before the end of the second quarter. And that was a baseline screen for starts. Kukoc the rebound. He can lead the pack. He's danger. He's danger right there. Gives it up to English. Starks goes down hard. When he hits you in the corner, you must be ready to catch and shoot. Weddington, good solid pick on Anthony, but we have a whistle and a foul away from the ball. Greg Anthony pleading his case. And right now, Kukoc is playing with great confidence. The only guy on the Knicks out there that can play him as a front court player off the dribble is Mason. So any time that he gets anyone else on him, he's going right for the ring. Well, you mean now Charles Smith has picked up his third personal foul. He has to sit down. We have Anthony Bonner with two. Oakley comes back into the game. He only has one. So Pat Riley seeing the big boys getting into foul trouble early. 7.29 left in the half. The Bulls lead it by seven. That was a double screen for B.J. Armstrong down on the baseline. Weddington, Oakley, and Anthony come over to track. Weddington, the baseline, the reverse. So you can count on the Knicks. The Knicks will trap that screen and roll. Your spot-up guy will be open. As they run at you to cover, then you can take them off the dribble. A lot of pushing and shoving underneath. Dick Bavetta blows the whistle. You can see the down screen. That was a beautiful screen again for John Stutz. And as Starks came off of that screen, Scott Williams really pops him. Bill Weddington now two for two in this playoff series. Keep an eye to the left of the screen. Now watch what happens here. Here comes Starks. Bam. See, he just stood him right up. Now, if you're going to do that, the screener will be open going to the front of the rim. Starks has missed his last two free throws, and as we mentioned, coming into tonight versus Chicago, he's 13 of 13 from the stripe and 26 of 27 in the two series combined. It's just amazing the progress that he has made. He went from 9 minutes to 12 minutes to 20 minutes to 29 minutes to 35 minutes right through the New Jersey series into the series. And he kept saying that the knee continued to loosen up. He now can dunk the ball without much pain. Which we saw in the last game just two nights ago. Armstrong. Kukos keeps it alive. Shot clock at 10. Plenty of time. Now we've got a whistle. 20 second timeout. Well, Scott Williams lost his shoot. Yeah, 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 you blow a tire, it's a little difficult to play. And they're going to call it a full timeout. So it's 6.48 left of the half. The Bulls lead it by eight. Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. When they reach the break in Chicago, Dick Versace and I will bring you the Reebok Halftime Report. Dick will analyze the first half of the Knicks-Bulls game, and we'll get a report from Paul Ryden on Chicago Stadium. It's the end of a glorious era as the Bulls prepare to move out. That's the Reebok Halftime Report. Right now, let's get back to Chicago Stadium. Ron Thulin and Hubie Brown, guys. Now, we'd like to show you the screen and spot up. Now, watch as Winnington comes in here and sets the screen. B.J. will come off. He will be trapped. Now, as Winnington spots up, the pass will be delivered, and you'll see the defender run right at Winnington once he catches that ball. Now, just keep an eye on it there. Now, there it goes. Here comes the rotation. That is there. And Scotty Pippen, Horace Grant check back into the Bulls lineup. They join Weddington and Armstrong, who lets it go. Did not hit the rim. That's a 24-second violation there first tonight. I mean, the Bulls bench definitely holding their own, or the, uh, uh, holding their own against the Knicks tonight. Although they may not be scoring as much, they're still, they're right up in there. Well, not only are they scoring, Ron, with the nine points, but they, get, they have the eight rebounds to go with it. And we told you, the offensive rebound, seven by the Bulls, that's the difference. Look at this. Showtime. I'm glad that Anthony did not challenge Pippen that time, because that would have been a big-time collision. 
Scotty Pippen already with 10 in the ball game. The lead is also 10. We have got some hard fouls. Joe English says he was hit from behind. Nine is pass into Patrick Ewing. Watch what happens. He anticipates, but he lost the vision, the sight line of Pippen. Pippen gave Greg Anthony quite a look, even if he didn't touch him at the end of that. Once again, on the left side of the lane, they ran a down screen for Starks. And as he's coming off, the Bulls are determined to whack him so that he's not open. I'm kind of surprised because what you have to do is open up and let the defender shoot the gap and force Starks to fade to the corner. Starks spending most of his time 15 feet away from the basket. His eighth free throw, he's only missed two of them. The lead is down to eight, six, ten left in the quarter. Seven straight years, the Bulls have put together 30 plus wins here at the stadium. English and Armstrong inside the Redwoods draws the whistle. Just a reminder, immediately following our game, Charles Barkley taking aim on the Houston Rockets as his Phoenix Suns lead that best of seven series two games to none. Bob Neal, Doug Collins with their beautiful Phoenix tans, I am sure, standing by for that basketball game. B.J., an outstanding free throw shooter. Uh, during the course of the season, he was right up there at 86%, one of the premier shooters that we have in the league. Can't say enough of the, the game he had in game two. He, he was getting bounced around, hit around, he kept his composure, and also the composure of the newspapers when everybody keeps talking about, you know, who isn't playing in this ball game, and B.J. is handling well. Now, right now, this is the first time that they have shown a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. Now, they get the trap. Now, let's see, the Knicks are determined to attack. Do you like to see that? Anytime that you have numbers and you come over half court, if you do not attack the rim, they'll press you all the time because they have nothing to lose. Doing now with five. Pippen being guarded by Mason. Mason did an incredible job on Pippen so far in this series. Pippen, the playground move. Weddington is hammered by Oakland. That was a four shot by Pippen. And fortunately, Winnington came up with that offensive rebound. I was surprised in Winnington's slowness. I thought that he would have gone up and taken that in the air and put it back. So you're taking your life in your hands tonight. Oh, oh, oh. You come down to the floor and go back up. You know, and Phil says, don't be afraid to get hit because you are. That's just because he's standing over on the sidelines. Uh, well, Winnington has just had a great year for these guys. Now, here's the coming in. Kukoc holding his own. And you can see Kerr is down, Williams down, Longley down, Winnington down. But that comes with shot attempts. And Winnington hasn't had the minutes, only four minutes in this playoff series against the Knicks. And during the course of the year, we're talking about a guy who gave you 18 minutes and scored eight points. And played some pretty good defense on Patrick Ewing. The Knicks turn it over for the eighth time tonight. Absolutely. Anthony on Armstrong. Ewing knocks it away, but we have a whistle and a foul, and I think it'll be on Greg Anthony. It is, and that will be number two on Anthony. What I like about B.J.'s game tonight, Ron, is the fact that he has gone into the paint now in the last minute and a half, twice. Patrick Ewing has come over on a double team, and he throws the head fake, and he waits. He waits and then gets the contact. It's always, don't be in a hurry once you get those big guys up in the air. Just make sure you get the contact. That was the 15th foul, so the Bulls will be shooting a penalty the rest of the way. The ultimate head fake is Harper and Davis come back into the lineup. Mason sits down with Anthony. The ultimate head fake, though, he was in game two of P.J. Armstrong, where it was, it was a tough foul on Derek Harper. Harper said, I didn't mean to foul him that hard, but I wasn't going to pick him up. Oh, and absolutely. That's not going to happen. Uh, and then he withstood the fact that it happened all in front of the Chicago Bulls bench, and he caught quite a bit of grief. But let's face it, Derek Harper has never been known as a cheap shot guy. No, he's a tough defender, and he made the all-defensive team twice, and you cannot do that as a point guard unless you can play people off the dribble and you have a lot of character and a lot of toughness. 
Three guard offense now for the Knicks. Should be a start close it away. But now they've got Davis, Harper, and John Starks in there. They're going small. Well, they're they're running Starks on Pippen. So Starks is running a small ball. Weddington, another rebound. Pippen, the fake. Oh, oh. oh my! What a ball fake by Scotty Pippen. Harper will have numbers if he hurries. To Ewing. That is the hardest foul Chicago has committed in the first three games. Well, they went head-to-head -head in college. St. Johnson's are south. They played against one another many years. Patrick has been in so many playoff games. He knows that he's not going to uh, get that shot. Here's a great move by Pippen. How about the switching of the hands and he get it up? Now, it's a nice pass. And then here comes the strong, the strong foul. Force Ewing to make the foul shot. Patrick only with six points tonight. He is 13 of 15 from the line in this series. Mike right, doing an excellent job. Ron, during the course of the year, he shot in the high 70s, and it's been an extension. Ewing only two of five from the floor, two of three from the line. The lead by the Bulls is 12. Inside of four and a half in a second. English over Davis. The tip by Grant. Another offensive rebound, and Horace Grant keeps it alive. That's four offensive points by Grant in the first half. That's double what he had in the first two games combined. Pippen. Hey, Pippen's feeling it tonight. No hesitation. Sparks is on me. I'm backing him down, and I'm going for the shot. We've got a timeout. The NBA Playoffs on TNT are brought to you by Lexus, the result of relentless pursuit of perfection. And by Champion, it takes a little more to make a champion. This match is the Bulls' biggest lead of the game. It is 14 with 4.01 left in the half. And one thing the Bulls are getting in this game so far is second effort. Well, you can see it right there. 11 offensive rebounds for a total of 15 points. And that's where the Knicks hurt them in games one and two. Now, we're going to give you Pippen. This is the fourth different defender on Pippen. That is his 14th point. He's five for nine with four rebounds. He's had, first of all, at the beginning, he had Bonner, then Charles Smith, then uh, Anthony Mason, and now Starks. And Patrick Ewing, the first real strong move to the hole for Ewing. And Little action underneath. It's going to be a delay of game warning. The first against the Knicks. Ewing now with eight points, cutting that deficit down to 12 inside of four minutes. See, I like this. Harper, keep reversing. If he makes Scotty work, you're going to run more time off the clock and keep them out high. They didn't so get right now. Yeah, look at this. Scotty went right to the hole. Right? Yeah. That's right that's there. great. Knocked out by Harper. They didn't get in their offense until 18 seconds of the shot clock, but as you said, Scotty went right down where he was supposed to. See, once he, they took it to the wing, they posted Pippen. Whether it's going to be Starks or whether it is uh, Harper, whoever picks him up, Scotty's going right to the post. Up. Cartwright back in the lineup. Weddington leads three points and three rebounds. Pippen dishes it off. It's going to be an offensive foul. Good call. Patrick Ewing. He's grimacing. Uh-oh. The knee. The right knee on Patrick Ewing. On that collision, as Pippen came off, there was a collision. Ewing went down. He's definitely injured here. There's no doubt about it. Because you never see him. You know, he, he'll, he'll, he will not allow you to think that he's hurt. Okay? And, and, and he has bad knees to begin with. That's Tendonitis right. in both knees. It is very severe. Harper from the arm. Ewing pushed in the back, put a little grunt there for effect. Cartwright's whistle for the foul. Well, that's one of the bad habits that Billy Cartwright has. Anytime that he's behind you on inside position, he'll always push you in the lower back. Now, tonight, we have not had a lot of that. But in games one and two, I thought both front lines were really leaning on people and putting them behind the board. That sends Ewing to the line. The 
Just a reminder, the Reebok Halftime Report is coming up next. Ernie Johnson joined by Dick Versace, where they'll update the current playoff picture. And our main man, Paul Ryden, will take a look at the venerable Chicago Stadium. As next year they move across the street, and this could be the final two games if the Knicks should win here in the stadium. If you're coaching Chicago, you want some execution now in this last three minutes. You do not want to give the Knicks a chance to come back. It's only a 10-point deficit considering how well Chicago has played. New York is hanging around, and that has been the story of the first two ball games. Sparks has to give it up to Ewing. Shot clock at 11. Oh, Oakley with position on Grant. Grant has to commit the foul. That is his second. Uh -oh. And now we've got a play with Harper and English. Uh oh. Look out. Oh, look look out. out. Into the oh, stand. My. Right in front. My, oh, my. Look out. We've got everybody. We've got yep. punches thrown. Ewing, Cartwright. It's right in front of us. And now Jackson's into it. Wow. Johnny oh, Bach is exactly. into it. Oh, this is ugly. Right in front of the commissioner. Right in front of the commissioner of the NBA, David Stern. And now they're keeping going. Now Riley grabs Harper and is yelling at him. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah, Harper. Harper. Now right behind us here, we have Starks down. And the security okay. staff is pushing John Starks. Yeah, that's Unbelievable. Right hey. The security staff, unbelievable, pushing John Starks. I don't believe that the security staff was doing that to John Starks. Well, Chuck well, Gardner, our stat man, got into it. He was buried amongst the crowd. Now, all that happened in the backcourt. It was between Harper and English. That's where it all started. As it passed over half court, then naturally we had a number of players. This is going to be very, very difficult in, for these people to, especially the referees right now, to kind of sort this out. Uh, mainly because every player from both teams was, was in the action. Here's the commissioner. Naturally, it happened right down below him, no more than 10 feet away as it stumbled into the first and second rows. And I tell you, they've lost Harper for game two. There's no question that it'll probably be longer than that, depending on what Rod Ford deems appropriate. The commissioner with the bird's eye view, he's gone. There were bodies everywhere. Then the security staff came over and started pushing John Starks. And Starks didn't let that happen for too long. Now we're going to give you the entire seal. Look right in the middle of the screen out at the three-point line. Now here it is here. English and Harper are face. Oops, there it is. Now Harper goes right after him. And as he brings him over here and throws him on the floor, you can see what happens. It empties right over the top of the fans in rows one and two. Now in the middle, they're pulling Williams out. There's Starks. The Bulls are pulling Starks off the top. Unfortunately here, you're into the middle of the fans in row two. That is right below the commissioner who is sitting in the third row here. But it all happened between English and Harper. Now from what we were seeing, you could see that both guys pushed at the exact same time. And then Harper went after English, whatever English said. And you can see the continuation here right now. English once again is drawing and everybody is trying to be calm in this situation. But there's a lot of hard feelings here. And Pat Riley now, here he is right now, coming right into the stands. And you can see Williams went right on top of that pile. Then it just becomes a full melee. Williams uh, right there, Jackson pulls Starks out, but they get knocked into the crowd. Then on top of all of this, right where the camera is, nothing is happening now, but everything is behind it. Now as the people are clearing, that's us right there. This one security guy took it upon himself, the guy right there to the right of your screen, to jostle Starks. Now, for whatever reason, because Starks is on the bottom of the pile. So that's where that continued to. Well, double ejection. Harper and English are both gone. The original personal foul was...
was on Horace Grant as we sort out our business here. That is his second. But JoJo English is gone. Derek Harper is gone. Now, whatever was said by JoJo English to Harper or vice versa, well, however that happened, they both went after one another quickly. You cannot fault the officials. They have done a nice job tonight trying to keep the game called closely. All right, right now the Knicks come with uh, Greg Anthony. Anthony is going to take the place of Harper. The Knicks are staying small. They are going to stay with Hubert Davis and Anthony in the backcourt. Starts at small forward with Oakley and Ewing. Chicago has countered now. They have brought in Steve Kerr to go with B.J. Armstrong. And then up front, they have Cartwright, Pippen, and Gray. Pat Riley was right in the middle of that, and so was Phil Jackson. The coaches are allowed to come in and try to separate their players. Oakley, there's the commissioner talking to John Thompson of Georgetown. Boy, I tell you, you want to fight, you don't want it in front of him. But right there, Oakley misses the first free throw attempt. We told you right now, this game is not out of the woods. The Knicks are only down 10 points. Now you have nine. It's major for Chicago that they do not lose their composure and allow the Knicks back in this next two minutes and 30 seconds. The Knicks feed off emotion, be it good or bad. Right now we have a passing game, screening away and opening up the middle. Armstrong with the two, the lead. Goes up to 11. Davis spots up for the three. One of the premier three-point shooters in the league. The acrobatic move won't go. He goes hard to the floor. Nice kick. kicker. Nice kick out by Cartwright. Her for three. Doesn't get it. The rebound will go into the Bulls bench. We'll go the other way with 154 remaining in the half. The Bulls lead by 11. In case you just tuned in, we just had a major brawl into the stands. Harper and English have been ejected, the only two players. Steve Kerr really struggling in threes in the series. Only one for five. Stark stops, pops. So oh, halfway down, Ewing puts it back. See there, Chicago must do something with that screen because John Starks is getting into the lane every single time that he makes the catch. After 10 points in the quarter, the lead is only nine. Kerr, wide open. Two acrobatic shots, one by Armstrong, one by Kerr. Once again, the guards continuing their dribble into the lane like they did in game two. Davis wants the ball. They're going to hold it. We are at the one minute mark of the second. Starks has to give it up. He got lucky. Left his feet. Pulls the trigger from three. Rebound Grant. Pippen pushing it on Davis. Armstrong. Yes. Anytime they're in transition. Steve Kerr. B.J. Armstrong. The second and fourth three-point shooters in this league percentage-wise. They are spotting up. That's why it's necessary for them to get the ball out. Davis for three doesn't get it. Watch takes it away from Armstrong. Bad pass. He looked right at the defender. The shot. Oh! Look at that! <laughs> That's the way they do it in Stillwater. What a wild, over-the-head <laughs> shot by Starks. He knew he was fouled. He just tossed it up, and then he gets the bounce. Keep an eye. See, bad pass. Grant looked right at Starks and still made the pass. Now watch this shot. Look at this. He just throws it over his head and gets the bounce. So Friday the 13th proves lucky as Horace Grant has to sit down with three personal fouls. Starks will go to the line with 28.6 left in the half. The Knicks trail it by 12. Very costly backcourt turnover for the Bulls.
Bulls could have been up by 16. Now it's down to 11. Well, there's a difference of about three seconds here. Shot clock and regular clock. Clearing it out for Scotty Pippen. Mason on him. That's uh, it's hand checking now, so you can't do that. Pippen, they close. Leaf open curve. Doesn't get it. The slam by Weddington won't go. Rejection by Ewing. Starks at the buzzer, doesn't get it, but what a wild 24 minutes. We've had technicals, we've had ejections, we've had a fight, we've had some pretty good basketball in between. 14 points for Pippen, shooting 50%. And as he hits to the locker room, the Bulls lead it by 11. Ernie Johnson and Dick Versace are next. The Reebok Halftime Report is brought to you by Reebok, to remind you that on Planet Reebok, there are no rules. 24 minutes in the books at Chicago Stadium. The Bulls with an 11-point lead over the Knicks. It's Game 3 of their Eastern Conference semifinal. This is Dick Versace. I'm Ernie Johnson. This is the Reebok Halftime Report. We see more of this stuff tonight. We saw the big Miami-Atlanta brawl in the first round. Tonight, late second quarter, you got JoJo English going at it with Derek Harper. Dick, how did you see this thing? Well, it I looked to me like they were both shoving at first, and then Harper went in, and he took the biggest umbrage here, and then a nice takedown there. And if you'll see, most of the players there are trying, Ernie, to try and break up the fight, which is a good sign. You didn't see like four or five separate battles going on. But what is going on here when you got a fight in a game this big, where everybody knows what's riding on, a possible one-game suspension if you, know, if you get tossed out of this one, you throw a punch. I mean, what's happening? A guy like Derek Harper, an established veteran in the league, ought to know better. I don't, know, I don't care what JoJo English said. Yes, but, you know, they're competitors. More than anything else, they're competitors. And obviously, JoJo English said something, along with the little shove, that really incensed Derek Harper. And then he took off on, on JoJo and the rest you saw. Another point on this, too. I think the guy who lights the fuse, if it was JoJo English, was something he says. It was the same thing with Dwayne Farrell in the Atlanta-Miami fight pointing at Grant Long like this, and when the fines and suspensions came out, his name was nowhere on the list. Doesn't the league have to do something to the guy who lights the fuse in a situation Well, that's like hard to say, Ernie. I mean, you'd have to be there and hear everything that was said. I think the league can only look at the tapes, and when they look at the tapes, then they have to make their adjudication based on what they see. They can't base it on hearsay evidence. I think, really, you know, if you look at what was going on in Chicago, and, of course, I came from Chicago, I read the papers on the plane. I mean, everything was fomenting this. Phil Jackson's neighbor suggested that they start a fight in the game, and Phil said, that is not how we want to play basketball. And I think that Chicago has been much more assertive in this game, and I think it kind of has frustrated New York. Through it all, the Bulls with an 11-point lead. And when the Reebok Halftime Report continues, the end is near for a Chicago landmark. Paul Ryden's report on historic Chicago Stadium is next. The Reebok Halftime Report continues with the Bulls leading the Knicks by 11 at historic Chicago Stadium. Oh, the games that have been played and the moments that have been etched in our memories in that building over the last 65 years. As the Bulls prepare to move across the street to a new arena next season, Paul Ryden leads us on a tour that chronicles the history and the charm of the Madhouse on Madison. This ancient among indoor stadia has hosted everything from basketball to boxing, soccer, the circus, Elvis, track and field, and concerts before they held up matches for encores. The NFL played their championship game here on dirt in 1932. Chicago's mayor was eulogized here. And of course, the stadium has hosted hockey from the beginning. An ongoing winter event is the changing of the floor. Purists and local historians are in love with this old place with the ornate carvings and the simple but descriptive name. No airline or corporate sponsor slapping their logo on the outside. That, of course, changes next year when new memories are birthed across Madison Street at the United Center. It'll be as modern as Chicago Stadium was when Herbert Hoover was president, but back then, that didn't include elevators. So a trip to the top still means climbing 108 steps if you want to reach the one and only skybox in the place. The United Center will have elevators and will be encircled by luxury suites. Beer kegs won't have to be caught by brave men at the end of a wooden incline. There probably won't be a Sonia Henny room off to the side. Yes, there are going to be a lot of changes to get used to next season. 
the cat that's made the stadium its home the last few years, may decide the new place is too uptown. And the new digs will most certainly not feature an elusive legend like King Rat. They brought cats in here and he destroyed them all. Big dogs, this rat was afraid of nothing. And he supposedly lived, I, and this defies, I suppose, rat life expectancy. But he lived for about 10 or 12 years, I'm told. And they finally found his remains up in the rafters. Which means that when King Rat went to his great reward, he went out with a view similar to this one. Though Chicago Stadium has been viewed thousands of ways over the last 65 years, from players, writers, and fans, those who love this place the most hold one view in common. I'm going to miss everything about this place. There's nothing I, I will not miss. I don't know. I mean, I think I'm still going to miss this thing a lot. I mean, I don't think I can figure out anything that I'm not going to miss about it because everything is beautiful here, and it's going to feel kind of bad when the stadium goes down. I know that for sure. Ernie Johnson and Dick Versace back at you from Atlanta. Uh, Houston and Phoenix, that's game two of our doubleheader, so don't turn away when this game is over. New York and Chicago, the Bulls, what kind of adjustments Phil Jackson making from game two to game three when you're down love two? Well, Ernie, I thought this would only be a game of adjustments. I didn't think that it was going to be fisticuffs. And uh, this is the adjustments, really, that Chicago didn't make between games one and two. All right, just kind of freeze it there, and let's take a look at what is happening in low post here. Pretty much... Chicago has seen fronting of the low post. But to counter that, you've got to either occupy or clear the backside. This time you'll see a pin down by Horace Grant, and you'll see the occupy on the weak side. Now watch carefully the circled two figures, Patrick Ewing and uh, Bill Cartwright. Now watch, Ewing continues now to try to keep his front. When he loses it from Cartwright, the one guy on the Bulls who will challenge him, he steps around to get it again, but because of the Occupy on the weak side, the lob is available, and that's the adjustment that's been made. Chicago with an 11-point lead. If you're the coaches now, how do you cool things off and get guys to th you know, think hoop here in the second half after that fight? Well, I'd like to tell you that I'd never been in this situation, but I've been in it about four or five times in my career. And one of the things you do is you have to keep things in perspective. This is just a basketball game. You don't want people getting hurt, and most coaches are very, very responsible. So I know that Phil Jackson and Pat Riley are saying to the guys, hey, look, okay, it happened. We don't want it to happen again. Let's go and see if we can get the victory. Once again, the Bulls with a halftime lead, but the fourth quarter has been their downfall. The third period is just ahead from Chicago Stadium. Reebok Halftime Report has been brought to you by Reebok, who reminds you that on planet Reebok, there are no limits. We are back in Chicago Stadium at halftime, where Chicago led by 14 on three occasions. The Knicks have never led. Only one tie was 2-2 as the Knicks lead the best of seven two games to none, along with Yubi Brown, I'm Ron Thul, and of course, the big part of tonight was the fight. We'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. Let's talk about the game, which is the most important thing. You mean, first of all, the Knicks shoot 40 percent, 41 percent. They're only down by 11. Once again, it's almost what's happened in the first two ball games. Chicago has to be cautious. You have to, you have to like Chicago's intensity, though. 13 offensive rebounds, five by Grant, four by Winnington, and then three uh, by Cartwright. Cartwright's 10 points major in that first half. The fact that they go to the line and they make their foul shots, Plus the fact they go three for seven and threes. Very big. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first 24 minutes. It will not be a punch count. We'll have field goal percentages instead. Now remember, coming into this, the Knicks hold them to 40% shooting in two games. The three-point shooting is right there. We told you to bowl three for seven. Also, the rebounding, the 27 to 15 total is magnified because 13 of them are offensive rebounds. And then you can see the second chance points. And once what we told you at the top of the show, it's Grant. Grant, Winnington, okay, and then the added thing of Cartwright. Now, Pippen is having a sensational half. We tell you 14 points, two for three and threes. Here he is knocking one down. He has the field this evening. The main thing for Pippen, minutes. Now, here's Grant knocking in the second rebound basket that he scores. Now, in the first two games, one offensive rebound, a total of five. He had five offensive rebounds and a total of eight in the first half tonight. Much more active. Now, the guy who's doing it for the Knicks, once again, is Starks. 
He comes in the ball game. He knocks in the three. And he's so active that he's seven for nine in foul shots and he has 12 points. Now, we'd like to give you the fight. Now, watch what happens here right in the middle. See, right there, Harper knocks English's arm down. That's nothing. Now, watch as they move over. Now, whatever is said right here, watch what happens now. They start talking, their heads come right together, and then it starts. They both push, and then boom, there's the punch by Harper, and then by the throw, and then it all goes from there. One thing Pat Riley said, he wanted to make sure his players knew the difference between intensity and losing their emotional ability to hold on to things, and unfortunately, they lost it. They lose one of their best defensive point guards. Bigger loss for New York than it is for Chicago. Oakley has a strip. Armstrong oh, is great. There he is. Oh, bad Threw it away right into the hands of Horace Graham. Oh. Bad pass by BJ, and they get the accidental off the leg routine. Right to Grant. <laughs> Just the way to design it. Billiards would be great. <laughs> Anthony, the blocking foul. Let's see. That's going to be on Scotty Pippen. That'll be foul number two on him. Grant playing with three personal fouls. Myers with three. Cartwright with two. Best interior defense by the Bulls tonight, Ron. Off the dribble. They're getting in front of the Knicks, and they're taking the charge in the chest. So far, they're not getting a shake in regards to the charge block call. Greg Anthony, who started 36 games during the regular season, starting the second half a point for Derek Harper, who, along with Jojo English, have been ejected. Shot clock at six. French pastry, Oakley. Bonner with three on the shot clock. They're not going to get a shot off anyway. It's a moot point. Loose ball. Loose ball. Great hustle by Scotty Pippen and Meyer. Right on the floor. Scotty's the one that. Knocked the ball loose and caused the loose ball. Do a little house cleaning. We play just over a minute. It is a 13-point Chicago Bull advantage. They're led by as many as 14. Inside, Pippen. Picks up where he left off. 16 for Pippen. Well, we told you, he was only shooting 35%. He had four turnovers per game in one and two. He only played 34 minutes because of foul trouble, but tonight he is the man. 10.37 left of the half. Union, it is a 15-point lead by the Bulls, their biggest of the game. Now keep an eye on Scotty here. This is a catch, turn, shoot. That's his 16th point of the game. He has four rebounds, and he has three assists. Plus, he is two for three in three-point shot attempts. Now, in both games, the first game won by the next 90-86. They won the second one, 96-91. In game one, they were down by as many as 15 and came back. Pat Riley was concerned, although he loved the fourth quarter comebacks, of getting themselves into some type of a hole. Tonight may be difficult to get out of that hole. How much emotion was actually used up during our brief melee? There you see Chicago's woes in the second half. Whistle and a foul. A Pete Myers definitely fouled Hubert Davis. Once again, Hubert Davis takes him off the dribble. That's Myers' fourth foul. And all of them, because Hubert continues to beat him off the dribble. He had him behind the board that time. There was no reason to foul. Hubert Davis hit the line. And a nice regular season versus the Bulls, shooting better than 68% from the floor. Not getting the minutes because Stark's coming in as Rolando Black is seeing action as Bonner comes in. But Pat Riley says that Hubert Davis has emotional stability and he understands that he doesn't get the minutes and he knows he's going to produce when he is in. Well, the big thing with Hubert is he shoots 47 from the field. How about 40 from three-point range and then 83 on the line? That's the key. And you love it when a young player and then when Starks got injured, he stepped up and played major minutes. And since the team won, Pat likes the fact of bringing Starks off the bench, and it's better for that second unit anyway. Myers sneaks away from the blue jerseys. Nice pass inside. Horace Grant. You love to see that. You love to see guys keep their heads in traffic. Grant 6 of 9. He has 12 for the ball game. Oakley from 18. Nothing but the bottom of the net. See, that play is there for the Knicks all night. 
whether it's Hubert Davis who starts, they curl into the middle, they're wide open. For once, you'd just like to see Chicago shoot the gap and force the guy to finish. Horace Grant shooting 70% from the floor tonight, 52% during the regular season. They're going to rue the day that they did not sign oh, him in oh. December. Oh. <laughs> you know, and oh, five of the tampering charges, those close to Horace said that has alienated him even farther, and they don't think there's any way he would resign with the Bulls after that little charge was put out. Ewing with the argument. One of the few times tonight that Patrick has actually gone to that pet move of his. He's now five for eight in this ball game. He's hit his last four shots. B.J. Armstrong, the bank is open. One of the best. One of the best in the NBA. Coming off at bad angles and banking in that 10 to 15 foot jump shot. The Bulls haven't missed a shot in the third quarter. They lead it by 15. Anthony's going to try a three, and he rolls it around. Greg Anthony, his second from the arc this evening. Two for four and threes tonight. And we told you, he ended the season with confidence on that perimeter shot. It was the wrap out of uh, Greg Anthony coming out of UNLV, but he said he came into this league to play defense. Ewing lets Cartwright get away. Cartwright screened for BJ. BJ came up to the foul line, wide open, right back to Cartwright. Always reward the big guys when they pin the defender on their back. Blackman. Back on top to Oakley, sees the scene, takes advantage of it. That's going to be an offensive foul on Charles Oakley, his third of the evening. Now, Cartwright took that one. That, that shook him a little bit. You can see he's groggy. He's trying to shake it off. See, that one, Cartwright, to me, was under the rim. You don't get that in this leg. You have to be out at least to the dotted line to get a charge call like that or to the, uh, to the, uh, the width of the lane. Now you're going to see it right now. Billy's he's too far underneath to get that one. But he got it. The Bulls have the ball leading by 14, nearing the eight-minute mark of the third quarter. But it's a clear out now. Blackman keeping an eye on Pippen. Armstrong gets it out. Crossing it over to Cartwright. The hook for Mr. Bill won't go. Grant kept it alive, and then Anthony collides big time with Myers, and Anthony's going to be whistled for the infraction. That is his third. Now, well, both guys were hustling that time. Unfortunately for Anthony, he got popped right on the forehead. You're going to see it. It's knocked out here by Pete. Now, watch Anthony. They're both going for the loose ball. But Craig gets popped right on the forehead. Post and Pippen. Pippen backing in on Blackman. Oakley with the rebound. Seven and a half left in the third. The Bulls lead it by 14. They trail in the best of seven series, two games to none. Anthony has it swatted away by Grant. Here comes oh, Pippen. Three on one. Nice. Myers. Blackman gets a piece of it. That was a nice pass by Pippen. He looked back, saw that he had a trailer. Right there, Myers going, you know, head over, takes out a camera guy. Now just watch this. See, he's, he, quick look. He knew he was there. I'm afraid to look down to my scoreboard. I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. Well, the tempo is perfect tonight for Chicago. Chicago is getting out and making things happen in transition. And here's tonight's GMC truck scoreboard. Pete Myers has to be living in a dream world. He played in Europe the last couple of years. Wasn't expected to make this team. Now he's in the NBA playoffs. Not bad for a guy who had an operation this summer and was just working out with the Bulls <laughs> to get in shape to go back to Europe. Next thing you know, he replaces Michael Jordan. Not a, not a bad, bad step. And, and, and he comes in, he plays 80, all 82 games. He starts 81. Average just under eight points a ball game. Well, Pete understands his job. He's out of Arkansas Little Rock. Ewing, oh, where is Anthony? Oh, oh. He saw it in game two. He does it again tonight. Patrick, I think, thought he was getting fouled. Pippen found the basket and he draws the whistle. We're going to show you Patrick Ewing on the 
McVeigh wants to hit the Cartwright delivery. Right there. See, that knocks him off balance. He brings down some rain with that one. Now, there is the foul right there. We have a timeout. We'll be back. With 6.54 remaining in the third quarter of game number three, the Bulls lead it by 15. You two nights ago, we talked about how important the front court matchup would be for both teams. Right now, it's all Bulls. Well, you can see the Oakley Mason, but that's also Mason, Bonner, and Smith. It's nine points to seven rebounds, and you can see what Pippen and Grant are doing. They're having a spectacular game, and we said at the top of the show, Pippen must come in, get the minutes, have a big scoring night, and Grant on the board. Both guys have played to their maximum potential. Now you add, uh, Smith has two points, and Bonner has two points also add to that nine. Scotty Pippen continues his accuracy from the line. He has 19 in the ball game. The lead pushed up to 16. Blackman on Pippen. He'll let it fly. Will Blackman only his third shot of this series. It won't go. See, the difference is the transition. Scotty is really pushing the ball tonight with authority. Now this is one of the rare times that the Knicks have been able to stop them without them scoring. Hartwright backing in. Grant hits it out. Ball belongs to the Knicks with 6.19 left in the third. Now at halftime, Billy Cartwright in 16 minutes had 10 points and four rebounds. Right now, Chicago owns the boards. Davis tries to get it into Ewing. He's guarded by Cartwright. Shot clock inside of 10. Dribbled it off his foot. Myers Armstrong. BJ, nice little stutter dribble. Ron, excellent call. Not only to stutter, but he looked him off. And Anthony knew that Pippen was on the other wing. Bill Jackson said, we get to our home court, we're going to bring this thing back to New York. The crowd is into it. The biggest bull lead. Ewing from that left side with the high archer. 18. You cannot play that any better than Billy Cartwright. Billy Cartwright, as a matter of fact, caught him right in the open hand. He was right on top of that shot. Patrick has hit his last six shots of the ball game. Well, he's come to life in games two and three from the shooting standpoint. They extend the offense of the ball. Shot clock at one. Pippen. It goes. Oh, let's go to Vegas Scotty. Ever since he knocked in that three in the first quarter, in the first few minutes in transition, he's had the field tonight. This may be a hole the Knicks will find difficulty getting out of. Oakley with the board. Draws the foul from Bill Cartwright. That'll be Bill's third person. Well, Billy did two, two wrongs right there. Number one, he didn't jump on the rebound, and Oakley took it right over the top of him, and then he fouls Oakley to complicate it. Now just keep an eye on the pressure on the shot. Look at this, look at that pressure. Cartwright is right up in his face, and he knocks it down. Now, Scotty, the clock is down. He knows that he must shoot this up over the top of Blackman. Gets the bounce. Charles Oakley as Corey Gaines has checked into the lineup for the next, the fourth year pro of Loyola Marymount wearing jersey number seven. This is his first appearance in the playoffs of 1994. The numbers on Oak. Well, it's nice to see Charles Oakley honored by being placed on the first team all defense. In this game also, Scotty Pippen. The forwards were Pippen and Oakley with Elijah on at center. Horace Grant, for the second consecutive year, made the second team forward. Scotty now, Scotty Pippen, three years in a row, first team, all defense, small forward. Oakley three of four from the line. He has nine points. The lead is still 16. Steve Kerr, who checks in, back in the lineup. Kerr needs to hit a three, Ron. He told me before the game he got a couple of good looks, probably his best looks in game two, just couldn't capitalize on it. Blackman was with his third. Well, I'd like to show you the all-defensive team. Grant, for the second time, makes the second team. Pippen, three years in a row, the first team. Oakley, the first time. And now Pat Riley has really been campaigning for that one for him. He calls them, you know, for the last couple of years, the best defensive power forward in the game. 
Well, Pippen 8 of 14. There's Oakley. Makes the all star team. He's doing an awful lot back in his hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. Trying to give back to the community. He has made rebounding an art. Well, a big thing with Charles is the fact that he is the designator picker up of any player coming down the lane on any screen and rolls. He's also on the floor for loose balls. He really extends himself from a professional standpoint every night. And that's what Pat Riley loves about his play. He is the definition of blue collar worker. But he gets it from his grandfather who worked the fields in York, Alabama. Pippen. Oh boy. Nine of 15 for Scotty Pippen. Not only is he making them, he's making them with the clock going off. Whistle, that's going to be a push call. Good call. Steve Jabby right on top of that. Foul is on Grant. That is his fourth personal foul. That is team foul number four. Both teams four team fouls. Pippen nine in the quarter, 23 for the ball game. They're a little slow getting Scott Williams in the game here right now. You know, you never like to see a guy picked up his fifth with four minutes to go because the substitution is slow. Smith into the lineup for the next. He triggers the inbounds pass. This is Gaines. Out of Loyola Marymount. He's played overseas and also in the CBA for many years. He's been up with a few ball clubs in the NBA. Good ball handler. Likes to play up-tempo basketball. That'll be a one-and-one. One. They're in the penalty. And at the line, it'll be Charles Smith. Smith in the first half, only two points. <laughs> I think that that is going to Scotty win. Because <laughs> Scotty continues to jabber with him. <laughs> Smith gets it to go. Nicholson is not afraid to hold a conversation. You can see that Charles Smith's numbers are down. But the reason for that is that Anthony Mason and Starks have been just outstanding with the second unit people in scoring when the four of them are out on the floor. So, Smith did it in the New Jersey series, Mason and Starks in this series. The turnaround by Scotty Pippen, Ewing had the rebound, lost it, here comes Gaines. He was a third round pick back in 88. Ewing inside of Oakley, I think Bill Cartwright may have had the hand wrapped around him. Yeah, he did. See, that's Cartwright's fourth. That's Cartwright's fourth foul. It's a bad foul because he had good defensive position. And once again, you're putting guys on the line and they're not having to make any shots. And the reason why we bring up that point, the Knicks are only shooting 41% for the game. Oakley a solid foul shooter. Oh, isn't that great? Way to go, dude. That's the second oh. guy that I that I put right into this. Yeah. Yes. I want to drive back to the hotel with you guys. <laughs> sure. Oakley for the year, a 78% foul shooter. <laughs> He's four or five tonight, though. I'll back you up. He's four or five tonight. And in this series now, he's eight of ten. 85% for 94 playoffs. For a man his size, he really has a nice touch. Very smooth. It's a 15-point deficit for the Knicks. Three and a half left to be played in the third. Armstrong back in the lineup. Time. Nice defense, Oakley. Longley can't get it. Starks does. He leads the blue jerseys. Smith, the archer, is going to be short. Williams with the rebound. He has Pippen. Oh, he looked at the three. There's Kerr. Out of time. Williams playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. Shot clock at six. Shot clock at three, Longley. Oh, boy. Luke just gets in the game, knocks it down. But all of their centers can hit that 17-foot shot. Oakley way out front, setting up the offense. Shot clock at 10. Longley will have trouble guarding Ewing straight up. The tip will go. Oakley keeps it alive. Smith loses. Oh, and what a take it away. Pippen. Oh, four on two. Choices to Williams, and he is hit hard by Corey Gaines, and uh -oh. they cost him. 
Corey Ames is gone. Oh, what a bad break for the Knicks. What a bad break. Now, that is a hard foul. That's a flagrant one they're calling on game. And they said, out of the game, right? He, he pointed out at Palma Alex said he was out of the game. Well, let's just see if they back that up here now. Now, you're going to see a four on two here. Good choice. And that's a hard foul. Okay, so they give him a flagrant one. So it's two and the ball. But you can put a guy out of the game on a flagrant one. Bull shooting 73% in the third. They lead it by 17. Corey Gaines was not tossed out of the game, but here's the official making the call. All right, now there's the hit right across the head. Now you're going to see the call, and he throws the hand out like he's out of the game. All right, he said he hit him in the head. Now, they do not throw him out of the game. They call it a flagrant one. They said it was not unsportsmanlike, but the blow to the head and the signal was definitely at that time and he was gone they've changed the call flagrant one two shots the ball on the side now tony kukoc in for pippen you see the Knicks shooting 50 percent but the ball shooting 73 percent for this quarter now if that would have happened the knicks would have probably played john starks as the point guard and this is a team we talk to the chicago bulls that are only shooting 40 percent in this series versus New York. 18 point advantage. That is the biggest of the ball game. In case you just tuned in, we had a major fight right before the end of the first half. JoJo English tossed, Derek Harper tossed. Plenty of time here, 10 seconds. Ewing the foul, his third. Hey, Patrick is upset now. That's the second time tonight. But they're calling the same foul on Cartwright at the other end. And you must be consistent. You'll see, look on the left side. There he's right there. See, he comes underneath. Patrick's kind of surprised that they call. Now, Luke Longley has been a terrific addition for this team. 7-2, 265. He really came into his own during the year. And... Gave them 19 minutes. He almost got eight points a game and five rebounds in 18 minutes on that second unit. Longley, the third year pro out of New Mexico. Inside of two minutes, the lead is 20. That is the biggest of the game for the Bulls. Two coaches trying to front Charles Smith down inside. Ewing with six on the shot clock. Spins, draws the foul. Scott Williams came strong that time from the opposite side to help out. And we'd like to remind you immediately following our game, game number two coming up, the Rockets and the Suns from Phoenix. America West Arena with the Suns lead that best of seven series, two games to none. The college Bob Neal standing by. Ewing gets the first free throw. He's five of six tonight. That foul, by the way, was on Longley, his third. Now, during the year, Patrick had a strong season. He was sixth in scoring, 24 a game, seventh in blocks, and then tenth in rebounding with 11-2. He gets them both, and it was his second-best free throw percentage of his career during the regular season. Leads 18, nearing one and a half left in the third. See, the Knicks will always trap that screen. The pick and roll. It's up to you, then, to find the free man. Two coach with six on the shot clock. Ewing, he's going to take it. There is the three. I tell you, I'm so happy for this young man. He has played terrific. Great game tonight, as well as in games one and two, but totally unappreciated. Now they get a foul on that shot. Williams was grabbed and tossed by Mason. Now keep an eye underneath, right underneath the rim. There it is right there. Mason grabs Williams and throws him out of there. So you get the three-point shot, plus you get a foul, and he is shooting one. Well, Anthony Mason not exactly doing what he did in game two. This is a five-point play possibility. 
Good coach was three of four from the arc coming in tonight, a four-point play. And the lead is 22. Games. Kerr on him. He looks for the pick set by Ewing. Starks. You can see the Knicks offense without Harper and Anthony a half a step behind. That's not a rip on Corey Gaines. He just hasn't seen this type of action this year. The big men have done a terrific job rebounding. By that we mean Winnington, Williams, Longley, Cartwright, Grant. Starks picks up the loose rock. He's got Ewing on the right side. Mason will post up on Williams. Final 37 seconds of the third. Nice move, Mason. That's a two. It goes, Charles Smith. Good ball movement. That time, Kerr just got hung up with Mason. Kerr wanted a foul. The big thing right now is stay in the game right now. There's a four-second difference on the shot clock and the quarter clock. They're spreading the floor. B.J. spotting way in the left corner. Now, he should be able to take Charles Smith. Well, he does draw the whistle of the foul. That's exactly what they wanted. The only guy who can guard him is Mason. And even then, he has beaten Mason a number of times tonight. Tony Kuko has the entire package this evening. He has played an exceptional game. Maybe he can read English. See, any time that players are designated double teamers, big man, big man. Their man gets an offensive rebound. You cannot blame them because they're over double teaming. And you see he was rewarded by making a second team all NBA rookie situation. Now Kukoc tonight has four points, four rebounds, four assists, and one block. I would say that's, that's a, a uh, nice job covering all of the stats. He's kept everything in there. Gaines, bad pass, Mason has to track it down, but he does get the two. Good hustle play by Anthony Mason. 1.7 seconds. Good coach lets it fly a little bit short. Well, it was a rather quiet third quarter as compared to the first 24 minutes of play, but we have 12 away, and the Chicago Bulls outscore New York by eight in this quarter, and they have upped the lead to 19 as we head to the fourth and final quarter, which in the first two games has belonged to the Knicks. The New York Knicks have never beaten the Chicago Bulls in game three of a playoff series, and right now the Bulls shoot 71% in the third, and look at the numbers you get. Well, look at right there, the 30 in the first, and then the 30 once again in the third. Now we're talking about a team that's only averaging 88 against the Knicks in the two previous games. They already have 89. It has been a tale of two halves for the Bulls. You can see in game one, they shot only 32% in the second half. Game two, 32%. And in the fourth quarter of both those games, it was much worse. Weddington will get the start for the second, or for the fourth and final. Armstrong's joined by two coach, Williams and Kerr. Main thing is, is not to play conservative. You've got to play within your tempo. Who coached a quick move on Anthony Mason, drawing Mason into his second personal foul. Herb Williams also went for the next. Tony Kukos has given Anthony Mason at least five moves, which I never saw him do in game one. With his back to the basket or even off the dribble, Tony is putting it all together here this evening. He can only make free throws. He's made only two of five tonight. And on the year, he was 74%. Three of six from the line for Coop Coach. The lead is back up to 20. This may be too deep of a hole for the Knicks, but they do have a lot of time left. Starks draws the whistle. Strong move by John. Took that right up underneath Wennington. That'll send Starks to the line. Wennington's second personal foul. See, in games one and two, Chicago just could not seem to get Williams and Winnington into the games for any amount of time and these were two people who are instrumental in their team success over the course of the year. 
Now, both guys this evening have made a strong statement. Winnington in the first half came in with four offensive rebounds as well as three points in the limited time that he played. How about five minutes? <laughs> Very limited. Well, John Starks has missed only three free throws the entire playoffs. Check that, two free throws the entire playoffs. Well, this group has the <laughs> second unit way out here right now. Oh, they're pushing it. Shot clock's at seven. Who coach? Nice pick by Weddington on Mason. Boy, Bill Weddington set a vicious pick on Anthony Mason. And Charles Smith picks up his fifth personal foul. What I like about the referees tonight, they're catching everything in the lane, and anytime big people are getting out of hand, they are right on top of the ball. Paul Mallard, Dick Pavetta, and Steve Jabby, the officials. Stolen by Mason. BJ reaches out and touches him. That's his second. We brought out the point in the second quarter. Anytime that you think you're going down the lane against the Knicks, you always must be aware of the offside people coming at you to pick you up and then also go for the steal. Well, the Bulls already 10 points over their average against the Knicks during the regular season. Mason Kukos picks him up. Shot clock at eight. Smith with four to shoot. Draws the whistle. The interesting fact right now in the first minute and 30 seconds is that this unit that's out on the floor for Chicago, they're fouling people when they really don't have to foul the people. And Unfortunately, they're putting their guys on the line to make the foul shots, and the clock isn't moving. You're picking up basically three points if you have good free throw shooters, and Smith is three for three. Now, John Paxson is going to come into the lineup. Paxson probably playing his last season for the Chicago Bulls. He's in his 11th in the NBA. Pippen comes back into the lineup. But John Paxson, the knees just aren't there, he told me. He's yet to score in the 94 playoffs. Was originally a first round pick by San Antonio back in 1983. And of course, who can forget his shot last year in the NBA Finals? Well, he's playing with a lot of pain. It's just bone rubbing on bone. A true professional, John Paxson. Now, talk to Kerr. Shot clock at eight. Who coach? Smith goes right around him with the left hand. Williams can't get the tip. Here comes Starks. Gaines, Starks, and Mason's running. Gaines doesn't get it. The tip oh, by John Starks. Oh, How about that one? Whoa, I think Starks. his knee's okay. Whoa. Was he up there? Oh, that oh, time? oh, baby. See, right now, after Phoenix came back at Houston, down 20. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> hey, Doug, Doug and, and I and you and I have talked the whole season. It's a marathon out here. Knicks on a 5-0 run. Paxson looking for his first in the playoffs. Williams can't get it. The other Williams does. Scott goes up with the shot. Kerr goes up with the foul. Uh, Scott Williams just got hit with a technical. And Steve Jabby's right. Excellent call. What happened? Williams gets the rebound. Throws the pump fake. Gets fouled. While he goes down on the floor, he mouths off to Herb Williams and Steve Javi. Keep an eye on this. Now watch this. There's the foul. Now watch what happened. As soon as he started mounting off the hand, boom, technical foul. That's the only way you are going to eliminate all of this garbage talking, pointing of the fingers, all this unnecessary talk. We've got a timeout. We'll sort it out in just about a minute. And here's tonight's Dutch boy in the paint. Well, you can see the offensive rebounding. Very big tonight for the Bulls. But then the center play. You can see the Bulls in the series have only been averaging 10.5. But tonight, Cartwright, Scott Williams, Luke Longley, 21 points at that position. I'll just keep an eye here right now. This is a nice move by Gaines. And here comes Starks right there, putting that one right back. Excellent play. Now, we'd like to bring up this fourth quarter. We're not trying to jinx Chicago, but we're just, in games one and two, they only averaged 17 points, and they only shot 
And we told you that they had seven 24-second violations in two games in the fourth quarter. So 55 to 34 in the scoring. It's necessary for them to stay at their tempo. They cannot slow down here now and play conservative basketball. There you see him in this quarter, only 1.04. Uh, Starks hit the technical foul. Williams will come back down. Like you don't want to try to jinx him. It just happens to be Friday the 13th, so <laughs> we don't want to jinx him or anything. But... And it'll be Scott Williams at the line, another unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. Fourth year fraud of North Carolina. Now, during the course of the year, Scotty's had problems with his shoulders as well as his kneecap. He missed 44 games this year. He's a guy who shoots 48% for you, but he's not a good foul shooter. He's only a 61% foul shooter. Hurts the rims both times. Corey Gaines getting a lot of playing time. He just played for Seattle, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Denver. Shot clock at seven. Takes it in with the right hand, didn't get it. Fights for the rebound. He last touched it. Will go the other way with 9:09 left in the game, and a 14-point goal advantage as Grant Longley come back in the lineup. Williams and Kukoc sit down. All right now, Rowley, the Knicks are down 14, and you have nine minutes to go. This thing is far from over because the Knicks are a great three-point shooting team, one of the best shooting lines. They have six guys on this ball club who shoot over 34% on threes, so they're never out of a game. They have seven guys shooting plus 50% from the floor during this playoff series. Chicago only has two, and one of those is Bill Weddington, who coming into tonight only had taken one shot. You can see right now the refs have been consistent. Any hand in the back is an automatic foul tonight. That was on Herb Williams this second. The Knicks cut six points off the lead while Patrick Dewey was out as he comes back in. Pippen, Ewing has to switch. Wide open. Longly open. Oh, Try to man. force a pass in. Chicago has it with seven on the shot clock. You never throw the pass with one hand. How many guys in this league can hold the ball in their hand like Dr. J or Connie Hawkins? To hold with score. two hands. You make it. If the defender jumps in there, you can always pull it back. With one hand, the pass has to be made. Kerr from the outside. Steve still struggling from the field. Starks almost lost it. Kerr doing a nice job defensively, and John Starks throws it away. No! Look at this. Just Scotty Pippen went up into the stands to try to save it, and I think it may have been his ball if he wouldn't have gotten it. I don't think anybody touched it. Great hustle by Kerr to initiate Starks to go to the floor, and Starks makes the wild pass. That would have been Chicago ball. Packs it on starts. Kerr picks up games and he has the basketball. Main thing for the Chicago guards, no three-point shots. Working around a start, has to give it up inside. Mason is fouled, oh, and it goes! See, they have life now. See, they're smelling it. They, they've had the confidence because of games one and two, making up the big deficit. Now, this is just a good, strong move by Starks, a nice pass, and then that was a little weak move by Mason. I, I thought he would take that up with two hands. Uh, he, he's lucky here that he did not get that block. Anthony Mason, the pride of Springfield Garden in New York. Completes the three-point play, and it is an 11-point game, down from 22. Rockets and the Sun standing by. That's the second game of our doubleheader. All right, now we have Mason on Pippen. Bulls have scored only one point in this quarter. Shot clock at four. Pippen has to launch the three. Didn't even draw iron. We're looking at maybe a nine or eight point game. Mason. Ewing over Longley. Count it. Good timeout. Bill Jackson up. He can see it because this is exactly what happened in game one. We have a New York 11-0 run. We'd like to show you what dominated quarters 
quarter four in game one and two. Now right here, this is where Mason has done all of his damage, in the lane. So you see Luke Longley is conscious. He leaves Ewing, Ewing makes a move, opens up, and it's in your heart. See, because Mason now finds Ewing, and that is his pet shot. All through games one and two, Mason's production magnified in the lane in the fourth quarter. Cartwright back into the lineup. We've played five and a half minutes, four and a half minutes, and the Bulls yet to get a field goal in this fourth quarter. They have only one free throw. Scoreless the last four plus minutes. They're 0 for 6 for the quarter. You can't keep to continue to go away from Cartwright either. He's had Ewing on his back. See, here you are. There's another one. It's their eighth violation now. That would have been a violation with the clock shot clock. Mason can't get it. Ewing lost the handle. The return by Mason. And here come the Knicks. They got to get their heads up. In game two, they went over five minutes without a field goal to start the fourth. Pippen almost knocked away by Ewing. A shot he wants. Yeah, he wants to force it. See? Everybody hesitant to shoot it as the shot clock reads four. Cartwright finally drops one down. Can you please throw him the ball, Cartwright. Can you please throw him the basketball? <laughs> Ewing is playing behind him, and then Ewing is running to double team anybody in the lane. Billy Cartwright is wide open in front of the rim. 14 for Cartwright. The lead is nine. Mason, a dangerous pass. Game will launch the three. Doesn't get it. They say it went over the top of the backboard. Chicago has it. All right, now that's a break. Now here you come. See, Ewing went over to get Grant. Okay, now you saw the rotation. But Billy, 7'2", 260, he's going to take the baby hook in your face. Right now, substitution, Myers for Kirk. Now you know they'll trap this. They'll trap that. But see, Cartwright was open. They went away from him. Grant over Smith. It goes. Because they knew that Horace Grant would make that jump up. <laughs> it's a piece of cake. 16 for Grant pushes the lead back to 11. Now here it is. It's a nice jump hook by Horace Grant. This is a shot that he is not famous for. <laughs> We take you back one year ago where John Starks jam in game two helped the Knicks jump out to a 2-0 advantage in the best of seven series. But in Chicago, Michael Jordan and company came roaring back in game four. 54 points for Jordan. Then in game five, Charles Smith, an omen, four attempts. Can't connect on him, any one of them. Then it is in game six. The Bulls wrap it up. The final basket, Scott Williams, and they go on to win their third straight NBA title, dropping the first two to the Knicks, coming back to win the next four. The scene is basically the same. They have dropped the first two of the best of seven, and they lead in this one by 11, with 5.58 left to be played. It's a good move by Phil. They have Myers on Corey Gaines. Myers, a good defender, if he just will not gamble for the steal. This play position. Almost tossed away. Inside, Mason with position. Whistle, we've got a push. And he got Cartwright on the push. See, they had him trapped. He's behind the backboard. No place to go. You cannot afford a cheap foul because the Knicks are shooting the penalty. Cartwright's fifth. Both teams are in the penalty. And right now, New York has three full timeouts, no 20. Chicago, three timeouts, one 20. Oh, my. Man, that was ugly. He's yeah. one of two from the line. He does have nine points. you got to get the points when they hand them to you. The Knicks have lost five straight game threes in playoff series. They have never beaten Chicago in a game three in their playoff history between each other. Mason now with 10, cutting the lead down to 10, nearing five and a half left in the fourth and final quarter. Myers. Cartwright, 14 points for Cartwright in the game. 
Nice pass. Nice look inside. Myers rolls it home. And that time, Billy took his time, and Pittman cut from the other side of the floor and pinned his man. Brown, Channy defense. The lead is 12. Five minutes left to be played. Ewing inside. It goes. See, I, I'm just baffled at how many times John Starks has been open on a oh, yeah. simple screen down. And they continue to follow. You follow, he's open. The center must help, then Ewing is open on the roll. 24 for Ewing. Shot clock inside of 10. Pippen. Let's it fly. That's a two, and he rattles it home. Scotty has just come up big tonight. Happy for him because he's had a sensational year. He has 25. Whistle, John Starks, B.J. Armstrong trying to hold on tight. His third. Now Scotty's feeling it. Cartwright is not going to force that. Back to Scotty. You can see shot clock going down. Big score. Once again, a foul on the baseline on John Starks. Armstrong grabbed him as he started to come off of a stagger. One under the rim, and then another screen outside of the lane. Starks now 12 of 13 from the strike. Rockets and Suns coming up next from Phoenix with Doug and Bob. They're waiting patiently, I'm sure. Starks only seven points from the field. The remainder coming from the line. Main thing right now for the Bulls, make sure you block out. You give no second shot. And then, no turnovers in the backcourt. That is critical from now to the end of this game. The lead is 11 with 418 left to be played. Pippen. Armstrong, great ball fake. Ewing the rebound. Good ball movement. High percentage shot. Corey Gaines calls the timeout right as he's falling out of bounds. Oh my, what a heads up play. That was right in front of us because he knew he was not fouled and he was falling out of bounds. With 3.58 left to be played in the ballgame, the Bulls trying to climb out of a 2-0 deficit in the best of seven. They lead by 11 points. Over in the East, of course, the Atlanta Hawks, an impressive win yesterday, holding the Pacers to just 69 points. That's an all-time playoff low for Game 2. Mookie Blaylock came alive, led the attack with a triple-double. And in the other game yesterday, the Utah Jazz opened up a 2-0 lead. The Nuggets, once again for the second straight series, have to climb out of a new 0-2 deficit. We have 15 seconds on the shot clock. The Bulls started the quarter 0 for 6 and have made four of their last five shots. Starks oh, for he, my oh, goodness. Geez. Is he a bandit or what? <laughs> you talk about a guy with courage. This guy will launch him. And no conscience. Starks that points in the fourth. You must pay attention to the three-point shooting of the Knicks. Eight-point Chicago lead. Myers sees Cartwright open. Doesn't get it. Oakley left alone from 19, and he buries the shot. Now you're looking at this with 3.20 to go. Chicago, three full timeouts. 1.20. New York, two full timeouts. Six-point lead, the closest the Knicks have gotten since early in the first. Mason on Pippen. Mason has worn him down the first two. Pippen doesn't get it. Tipped out by Grant. Knicks have it. Down by just six points. You must be very careful now in double teaming New York. How about that? 22 to 9 in this quarter. That has been the story of this series. Sharks nine points in the fourth. Ewing, baseline jumper. As a break. You've got to push. You've got your lead by pushing and looking for transition and trailing. You cannot play that conservative. If you push, you might make something happen. Also, you're shooting the penalty. Shot clock at eight. Armstrong from 19. B.J. Armstrong with the biggest shot of the ball game. 
Uh, he's played real big in games two and tonight, game three. 17 for Armstrong. Ewing. The baseline jumper by Patrick Ewing. 26 for Patrick. The lead is back to six. 194. We have two minutes left. Two minutes left. Armstrong inside. Good strong move. BJ did not hesitate. Not afraid of the contact. They caught the Knicks. They caught the Knicks thinking that they were going into the triangle offense. And BJ right here, this is the shot that he hits from the top. See, it opens up right there because his man could not get over the screen. At the other end, though, Right here is a strong move by Patrick. Cartwright late getting there. At this end of the floor, B.J. Armstrong surprised everybody by going strong to the rim. Armstrong 18 for 18 in this series from the line. Well, he's just had such a sensational season. He made the all-star team. He's second in the league in threes. He shot 44%. He's 14th in the league in foul shooting at 86. Just had a terrific all-around season. This is the second. 150 left. The lead is seven. The Knicks with the basketball trying to make up a deficit that reached 22. Big thing with Myers is he must stay with Starch. You cannot allow Starch to look at a three. Davis is in the lineup for the next. Ewing puts the shoulder down, oh, takes the jumper in. Bill Cartwright just shook his head. Well, you have to. That was a prime time shot. 28 for Ewing, 10 in the fourth. Five-point lead, Starks, great effort play. Loose, Loose ball, ball foul good call. on John Starks. Good call. Starks did not have a, did not have a good ball. angle at that. Myers was leading to that loose ball, and he took him down. Now, Pat Ewing, I mean, Pat Riley is all upset right now. See, watch this. See, Myers had a shot. Now, watch what happened. See, he took him down. Now, if you're a Knicks fan, you, want, you say that's a totally loose ball. It was a great effort by Starks, but he did undercut Pete Myers. Pat Riley doesn't like it. Myers has struggled at the line all evening. Just one of three, make it two of four tonight. Six points for Myers. The numbers from the line tonight. The Knicks hot. Bulls struggling. Well, that's the first game because in games one and two, Chicago shot a blistering 88% on the line, 51 for 58. Doesn't get it. Starts with the rebound. Lots of timeout with 116 left. And the Chicago Bulls clinging to a six-point advantage, 102-96. Two ninety-six with one sixteen left to be played in the ball game, and the fourth quarter is not kind to the Chicago Bulls. You can see right there the Knicks are averaging twenty-seven point five, the Bulls seventeen for the quarter. Look what we have right now, just amazing. The timeout situation—you can see the Knicks are in a bind. The Bulls have plenty. Now it's a six-point difference. Plenty of time to go. They'll take the best. They'll look for the two, but if they get an open three, naturally they'll take it. Two-man game, Hubert Davis and Ewing. Ewing inside, count the basket for Patrick Ewing. The lead is down to four. Well, Patrick caught Billy on the top side, drop-stepped him, just took it easy. Cartwright was afraid to foul him in that situation. 30 points for Ewing, outside. Shot clock inside of 10. Mason on Pippen, shot clock at three. Pippen, the ball fake, the shot won't go. Cartwright, the rebound, and the Knicks take it away. No whistle, we'll go the other way with it, with 39 left. Cartwright got away with a, with a push that time. That's how he received that rebound. 
Ewing's hit a three in game two. He's going to take it inside. Count it. It's a two-point ball game. Plus, the Knicks are going to get this ball back with time. You cannot run the clock. There are five seconds difference here now. Now, this is critical. He wants a timeout. With 13 on the shot clock, 17.9. What a tremendous job by the Knicks in the fourth quarter again. And now he calls a 20. Hang on, I think the Knicks have, or the Bulls have just changed it to a 20. And they have. It is not a full timeout. They want to talk about it. But while Dick Pavetta was going over to the corner to uh, single the timeout, Bill Jackson read him the riot act about the Bill Cartwright play. But like you said, I mean, we saw the push in the back. Yeah, Cartwright received the ball because he pushed uh, Ewing underneath the board. Now, right now, this is critical. Chicago still has three fulls. They must get the ball in bounds. We all understand that. At the other end, the Knicks still have one full timeout. Now, this is just a strong move right here by Ewing. Now Chicago says we want a full timeout. So they took a 20. They couldn't figure it out. They're going to take a full. Now right now, that was slow rotation. They never got there in time. Ewing comes up strong again. Bulls led by as many as 22. They led by 19 coming into this fourth quarter, but they've only scored 13 points, and it is a two-point advantage now for Chicago. Big factor here. You have 13 seconds on the shot clock. Two coaches now in the game, and so is Kerr. So you're going with two perimeter guys. Now what you also must remember, the Knicks have one timeout remaining. Big thing, I cannot believe that Scottie Pippen is not going to be involved here with something off of penetration. The Knicks double team Pippen. All right, they're going 1-4 right now, looking for the spot up off the dribble. The clock is at six. Pippen with three on the shot clock. He's not going to get a good shot off. 2-1. No, they're going to call a violation. That is a shot clock violation. The Knicks with one timeout left have a chance to win, tie the basketball game and win it with a three. Now this is just, you know, this, unfortunately he waited too long and the sideline acted as another defender. This ball does not hit the rim. It's a 24 second violation. There should be 4.2 seconds. They moved it back to 5.5. Shays off. 102, 105.5 left. Phil Jackson is upset of the time left. He thought it should be less than he has his feet. Well, as the ball is shot and it ricochets off the board, the shot clock went off. It's definitely under 5.5 seconds. Keep an eye on this now. The ball is going to go up high, and it's going to hit. You cannot see the red light. See, and they called 24. See, it was inside of five seconds. Now, this is critical here. They have a long time. All right, now, there is your delay of game. Now, remember, the Knicks have no timeouts remaining. None. So this is critical. You know that they want to try to get Ewing in this play. And start. There's Ewing. Ewing for the tie. He's got it with 1.8 left. A sensational play. And they call a timeout right as they brought the ball in. Can you believe what just happened? I cannot Ryan's believe it. inbound that ball to Scottie Pippen with 1.8 seconds to go rather than call a timeout when you had three timeouts remaining. Unbelievable. Now keep an eye on it. Ewing is coming in. You know they're going to Ewing. This is his 34th point of the game. He is now 14 for 19 from the field. Nine rebounds, four assists, and two blocks. We'd like to show you Patrick Ewing making a sweeping hook shot. The first one of the night. New York in this quarter, 11 for 16 in this quarter, 69%. Chicago, only five for 15. You know they're going into Ewing. He's had such a special evening. 14 for 19 from the field for a total of 34 points. Now, right now, Chicago had one timeout left. They had three. Once we went inside of two minutes, they lose a timeout. So by, they had two, they called one, and now they just exhausted. They have taken their last timeout to set up a shot with 1.8 seconds 
on the clock. Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. We'll send you back to Chicago Stadium for the finish in just a second. Just want to let you know, game two of our doubleheader has started nearing the midway point of the first quarter, and it is 12 to 10, the Suns over the Rockets. Let's go back to Chicago Stadium. Ernie, our story, Chicago led by eight with 2.21 to go, but New York has outscored them 10-2 since then. 1.8 left, no timeouts left for the Bulls. Myers triggers the inbounds pass. Kukoc for the win! It goes! Oh, brother!